discover the Trans-Africa Highway and how it will transform the African economy. Historically, a united African continent has been the vision and drive of a few great African leaders. Dr. Kwame Krumah has previously advocated for a united African front that would profit greatly from one another's unity, gaining inspiration from sophisticated science and technology to participate in collaborations that would encourage concord, increase economies, and as a result, eradicate poverty. Growing continental commerce cooperation, as well as flexible border and port agreements, have necessitated the creation of a network that allows for access to inaccessible locations while reducing journey time. According to the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, UNECA, the African continent has seen a 52% increase in commerce to almost 35 billion US dollar in the last five years as a result of less severe border controls and lower tolls and taxes costs. With the implementation of the world's most complete global market in the continental free trade area across the African Union, the continent is confident in a favorable reversal. The apparent increase in trade and commercial operations has prompted a reasonable investment in the road and rail networks, as well as other critical infrastructures, in order to strengthen continental cooperation. The ambitious Trans-African Highway has been identified as a viable alternative among others, with significant power to push this cause, despite the fact that it is still unfinished. The huge intercontinental infrastructure has been discussed for more than half a century, with the goal of completing it someday. It was envisioned by the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa in 1971 to traverse the African continent, spanning a total of 60,000 kilometers of road networks divided into nine key corridors or highways. The Trans-African Highway Project encompasses the building and maintenance of a network of roads and highways across Africa. The infrastructure, also known as the Trans-African Corridors, is a 56,683 kilometers long corridor that connects nine countries and is being built by the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, the African Development Bank, and the African Union in collaboration with regional international communities. Although a fourth link north-south of the continent was established by the boundaries of two east-west courses, the nine highway links have been classified into a group of six major east-west corridors and three north-south routes. Trans-African Highway 1, Cairo-Dakar Highway, 8,636 km, TH1. The Cairo-Dakar Highway connects to the Trans-African Highway 7, also known as the Dakar-Lagos Highway, to provide a second north-south route along the continent's western edge. It follows the Mediterranean coast of North Africa from Dakar to Algiers, passing through Rabat, Tunis, Tripoli, and finally Cairo. Even with the Algerian and Moroccan borders closed, the 8,636-kilometer coastline route is currently complete and operational. Even though the Nwadhibu Mwakshat Road was asphalt in 2005, a patchy few kilometers near the border between Morocco's Western Sahara and Mauritania only have desert trails. Trans-African Highway 2 Algiers-Lagos Highway, 4,504 km, TH2. The Trans-African Highway 2 runs from Algiers to Lagos in the south, passing via the Taman Rasset province in the south. Construction of portions of the Sahara began in the 1970s, well after its conception in the mid-1960s, making the Algiers-Lagos corridor one of the continent's oldest. The Trans-Sahara Highway is also one of the project's most complete roadway networks, with only around 200 kilometers of unpaved desert track remaining. However, border control is strict regarding its use. The central area, on the other hand, presents a challenge necessitating stringent precautions and vehicle requirements to ensure safety in the severe desert environment and climate. Trans-African Highway 3, TAH3, Tripoli Windhoek, Cape Town Highway, 10,808 kilometers. This route follows a latitudinal path from Tripoli, across Libya, to Jaina, Chad's capital and largest city, and then on to Windhoek, Namibia and lastly to Cape Town, South Africa, which was initially excused because the project was designed during apartheid's era. Its purpose is to connect the northern and southern African areas 
as an alternative to the Cairo-Cape Town transnational route. This north-south highway covers a total distance of around 10,808 kilometers, however it requires repairs because it is the corridor with the most missing roadways. Only national links between Libya, Cameroon, Angola, Namibia, and South Africa appear to be functional. Trans-African Highway 4, Cairo, Gaborum Highway, 10,228 kilometers, TAH4. This 10,228 kilometer corridor runs the length of the African continent, from Cairo, Egypt, via Khartoum, Sudan, and Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, to Nairobi, Kenya, to Harare, Zimbabwe's capital, and lastly to Cape Town, South Africa. It's an alternative route to get to South Africa, Cape Town, or Pretoria, from the north of the continent. The Castel Ashkeet border station currently provides road access to the Egypt-Sudan border. The Ethiopian link is paved, although it passes through steep terrain, making it dangerous to wander. Nairobi's paved highway crosses the Lagos-Mombasa Highway in northern Kenya. The Trans-African Highway 5 is also called as the cairo Gaborum Highway or cairo Pretoria Highway in documents, although this term can be disputed because the route passes via southeastern Botswana. Trans-African Highway 5, dakar the Highway, 4,496 km, TAH5. The Trans-Sahelian route connects seven countries and five capitals in West and East Africa, all of which share a similar climate and atmosphere. It is expected to loosen border barriers in order to promote trade and preserve the centuries-old cultural harmony. The 4,500-kilometer route runs from Dakar via Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger, and Nigeria to the most northern tip of Cameroon, ending within Chad's capital Jaina's western border. The structure is mostly complete, with the exception of a few kilometers in and around western Mali that require urgent improvements, despite the fact that other portions are still under construction. Trans-African Highway 6, Jaina Djibouti Highway, 4,219 kilometers, TAH6. This 4,219 kilometer route diverts the Trans Sahelian Corridor from Jamuna to Djibouti's port on the Indian Ocean, creating a total 8,715 kilometer west east link from Dakar. The Jamuna Djibouti Highway, as well as the Trans Sahelian Corridor, were designed to resemble original routes envisioned by the French Empire in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. It begins in Jamuna and travels to Djibouti, passing through Sudan's Darfur region and Ethiopia's north. It is made up of just under half of paved roads, with some notable sections in poor condition. The region between the Sudan and Chad borders has dangerous road stretches that have been shut down, while Ethiopia's highland environment poses substantial obstacles to highway builders and engineers. Trans-African Highway 7, Dakar-Lagos Highway, 4,010 kilometers, TAH7. From Mauritania in northern West Africa, right above Dakar, to Nigeria, the Trans-West African Coastal Highway travels through a number of West African coastal countries. The highway arcs around the continent's western extremity, passing through Dakar, Banjul, Bissau, Conakry, Freetown, and Monrovia on its way to Nigeria. According to O Papers, the route is 4,560 kilometers long, with 3,777 kilometers paved, accounting for nearly 83% of the total length. The African Development Bank estimates the highway to be 4,010 kilometers long, with a 3,260 kilometer paved section, excluding the 570 kilometer Mwakshat Dakar length. All highways are two lanes, with the exception of a few minor four lane motorways. Trans-African Highway 8, Lagos-Mombasa Highway, 6,259 kilometers, TAH8. This transnational highway connects with the Trans-West African Coastal Highway in Lagos and runs all the way to Mombasa, Kenya's coastal city, along the Indian Ocean, forming the continent's longest west-east network at 10,269 kilometers. This route connects the western and eastern halves of the continent, passing through Yaoundé, 
Cameroon's Capo, Bangui, Central African Republic, and Kampala, Uganda, on its way to Mombasa, Kenya. Because of a core part across the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the transcontinental channel is currently not a viable route between West and East. Trans-African Highway 9, Baralabio Highway, 3,523 km, T at H9. The Baralabio Highway runs from Labieto, Angola, and intersects with the Tripoli Cape Town Highway, Trans-African Highway 3. It travels from Lusaka, Zambia's capital, via Harare, Zimbabwe, and finally Bera, Mozambique. It is mostly completed in the southeastern half, where it uses paved national roads in Zambia, Zimbabwe, and Mozambique. However, the western half, which runs for most of Angola and the Democratic Republic of the Congo, is made up of earth tracks or once paved roads that need to be repaired. When completed, the Trans-African Highway will promote regional growth and improve trade. This motorway will eventually connect the African continent, allowing for more open trade between countries. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about African advancements, please like, share, and subscribe to Africa Reloaded. Remember to turn on the notification bell to be the first to hear about our new video release.